Welcome back to Structures Unchained. Today, we're inside the Gateway Countdown. At 8.17 a.m., a train stops just short of the Hudson tubes. Inside Penn Station, the boards start flipping. Platform crowds tighten. Conductors repeat the same line. We're waiting for clearance, and nobody knows if that means two minutes or 40. Because the most important mega project in America isn't a skyline or a shiny new terminal. It's two tracks under a river, two 1910-era tunnels, no real backup. And since Superstorm Sandy, they've been running with damage you can't see, saltwater that sped up corrosion, cables, concrete, and signal failures that show up as mysterious delays until one day they don't clear. So when people ask, is New York's $16 billion gateway tunnel already too late? They're not asking about construction, they're asking this. Can you replace the artery while the patient is still sprinting? Without the whole Northeast Corridor collapsing into a headline, let's break it down. The Hudson Crossing doesn't behave like a New York project. It behaves like a national dependency. Those two tubes are the only passenger rail link on the Northeast Corridor into Manhattan from the West, which means one small incident doesn't just delay a commute. It can ripple from New Jersey through New York and down the corridor like a domino run. And the danger isn't just old, it's the lack of redundancy. If one tube goes down unexpectedly, you're instantly trying to run a region on half its capacity. If you try to fully rehabilitate the existing tunnels before new capacity exists, you don't get construction disruption. You get structural reduction. That's why the most terrifying sentence in this entire story is simple. There is no good time to close a tunnel you can't live without. So Gateway isn't a prestige build. It's an escape route. This isn't about faster trains. It's about preventing the corridor from becoming one failure away from an unmanageable day. Here's what changed in late 2025. The Hudson Tunnel Project didn't just advance, it crossed a psychological line. As of December 2025, the first two custom tunnel boring machines, the hardware that actually carves the river crossing, cleared factory milestones and moved into shipment and assembly reality heading into the 2026 tunneling phase. That sounds like bureaucracy until you picture what a TBM really is a moving factory built for a specific geology, built to operate under pressure, built to do one job for months on end without a mistake that freezes the whole timeline. Because once the cutter head turns, the schedule stops being political. It becomes mechanical. Every day you're not boring is a day the system is still living on two aging tubes. Every delay isn't just money, it's exposure. And in this project, exposure is the enemy. The TBM milestone is the shift from we're planning to we're committed. And from here, the only question is execution speed. A Hudson Tunnel isn't one construction site. It's a choreography. One side is New Jersey. Approaches, staging, launch infrastructure, and the geometry of tying a new tunnel into active rail lines without breaking service. The other side is Manhattan, where you're not just building beneath a city. You're building beneath a city that is already running a rail system at full volume every day. By December 2025, multiple active work zones were already doing the unglamorous jobs that decide whether the main event goes smoothly later. Utility relocations, deep excavation, access shafts, ground stabilization in and around the river alignment, and the staged prep work that allows a boring operation to begin without improvisation. This is the reality of modern tunneling in a dense region. The tunnel itself is only the headline. The enabling work is the battle, and it all exists for one purpose, to reach the moment where the system can finally breathe. Because Gateway's logic is a timed handoff. You build the new tunnel first, then, and only then, do you get permission to take the old tunnels apart and rebuild them properly. Miss that handoff, and you don't just miss a milestone. You miss the window where the region can absorb the pain. Gateway is a relay race. The baton pass between new capacity and forced rehab has to be clean, or the corridor pays for it. Gateway spent years as the Northeast's most famous everyone agrees, nobody moves project. That changed when the money got pinned down. By late 2025, the Hudson Tunnel Project's funding framework was no longer theoretical. The project had secured its major federal commitment and financing structure, 
giving the build the one thing it lacked for decades, a stable foundation to keep crews working year after year. But here's the twist. When a mega project gets locked in, the risk doesn't disappear. It changes shape. Now the threats are quieter and more dangerous. Procurement delays on long lead equipment. Coordination friction between agencies. Document control problems that turn into claims later. Scope creep that arrives disguised as small adjustments. This is why you can have funding, you can have machines, you can have crews, and still lose time if the project management isn't ruthless about flow. Once funding is secured, the project stops being a question of politics and becomes a question of discipline. Even a perfect new Hudson Tunnel can underperform if the corridor around it stays kinked. That's why Gateway is really a system story. Portal Northbridge is the best example, a reliability fix designed to eliminate a notorious weak link on the approach into the Hudson Crossing. It's not glamorous, but it's the type of asset that prevents a random bridge issue from turning into a corridor-wide stall. Then you have the Sawtooth area, another historic constraint on the New Jersey side that's part of the broader effort to expand capacity and remove fragile segments that shouldn't be carrying modern volumes. And looming over all of it is the hard truth. Everything still funnels toward Penn Station, which means even if you fix the river crossing, the receiving end still matters. Because if Penn can't absorb the flow, if circulation, platforms, and operations can't keep pace, then the tunnel's extra capacity turns into a different kind of bottleneck. Packed concourses, platform confusion, and delays that start after the trains have already made it to Manhattan. Gateway doesn't succeed in isolation. It only succeeds if the entire corridor behaves like a modern system, not a patchwork of heroic workarounds. A tunnel is only as powerful as the corridor that can absorb it. If too late means does the new tunnel arrive tomorrow, then obviously not. But that's not the real question. The real question is whether Gateway can beat the wear and tear clock, because the old tunnels don't need a dramatic collapse to become a crisis. They just need to keep degrading until reliability drops below what the corridor can tolerate. As of December 2025, Gateway has crossed into the phase where it's no longer a promise. It's an active build with real momentum and a tunneling phase that's about to begin. So no, Gateway isn't too late yet, but it is now officially in the phase where delays stop being abstract. From here on out, Every slip doesn't just cost money, it costs resilience. And on the busiest rail spine in North America, resilience is the entire point. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.